Steroids are synthetic chemicals that copy what your body's natural hormones do, but on overdrive. Think of them as hormone impersonators wearing lab coats. There are two main kinds, corticosteroids and anabolic steroids. Corticosteroids are used by doctors to reduce inflammation, like for asthma or arthritis, and have nothing to do with muscle growth. The ones people talk about at the gym are anabolic androgenic steroids. These are designed to copy testosterone, the hormone responsible for muscle growth, energy, and male traits like deeper voices and body hair. They didn't come from some underground lab for bodybuilders. They were originally developed to treat medical conditions like delayed puberty and muscle-wasting diseases. In short, corticosteroids calm your immune system. Anabolic steroids hype up your muscle-building system. Totally different roles. Same family name. And while one gets prescribed by your doctor, the other often gets whispered about in locker rooms. Once anabolic steroids enter your system, they act like testosterone on steroids. Literally, they latch onto androgen receptors, which are tiny docking stations found in muscle cells. When a steroid molecule connects to one of these receptors, it sends a powerful signal. Start building protein and fast. This process is called protein synthesis, and it's how your body repairs and builds muscle tissue after workouts. But the effect doesn't stop there. Steroids also reduce the amount of cortisol, a hormone that breaks down muscle during stress. That means faster recovery times and less muscle breakdown after tough workouts. Your muscles stay in growth mode longer. At the same time, steroids increase nitrogen retention, helping your body hold on to the building blocks of muscle. The result? Bigger muscles, more strength, and the ability to train harder and more often, at least while the steroids are active. Anabolic steroids come in many forms, each with its own chemical tweaks and personality. Some are pills, others are injectable oils, but they all aim to mimic testosterone, just in slightly different ways. One of the most well-known is Dianabol, methandrostenolone. It's oral, fast-acting, and favored for quick muscle gains, though it can be harsh on the liver. Testosterone itself is widely used in different forms, like testosterone enanthate or cypionate, injectables that stay active in the body for days. Then there's trenbolone, a powerful injectable known for massive strength gains, hard muscle appearance, and equally intense side effects. Anavar, oxandrolone, is considered a mild steroid, often used by those wanting lean gains with fewer androgenic effects. Others like Winstrol, Decadurabolin, and Equipoise have their own loyal fans and unique profiles. The choice depends on goals, bulking, cutting, strength, or avoiding certain side effects. Anabolic steroids were originally developed for medical reasons, not for bodybuilding competitions or beach photo shoots. In clinical settings, doctors prescribe them to treat delayed puberty, muscle wasting from HIV AIDS, severe burns or certain types of anemia. The goal is to restore hormone balance or rebuild tissue, not to create superhuman athletes. These medical doses are small, carefully controlled, and monitored for side effects. That's very different from what happens in non-medical or recreational use. Outside the clinic, people often take 10 to 100 times the recommended dose, stacking multiple steroids at once in what's called a cycle. The goal? Bigger muscles, more strength, and a leaner body, faster. But that massive dose increase also boosts the risk of health problems. And since these uses are illegal without a prescription in most countries, users often get their steroids from underground labs or unregulated online sources, adding even more risk. Steroid use is more widespread than most people think. And it's not limited to professional athletes. According to data from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, approximately 3 to 4 million Americans have used anabolic steroids at some point. Surveys suggest that most users, nearly 85 to 90 percent, are not competitive athletes, but regular people seeking improvements in appearance, strength, or self-confidence. The typical user is male, between the ages of 20 and 40, often with some level of fitness experience. However, steroid use among teenagers is growing, with some high school surveys showing up to 4% of male students admitting use. In women, usage is far less common but not non-existent, particularly in bodybuilding or competitive fitness circles. Use is also seen among military personnel, law enforcement, personal trainers, and even actors or models, where physique expectations are high. The motivations are diverse, but the pattern is clear. 
Steroids have moved far beyond elite sports. Steroids can enter the body in a few different ways, each with its own timeline, risks, and preferences. The most common method is intramuscular injection. These steroids are typically suspended in oil and injected deep into muscles like the glutes or deltoids. Injections bypass the liver, reducing liver strain and allowing for slower controlled release into the bloodstream. Another method is oral steroids, taken in pill or tablet form. These are convenient but often alkylated, chemically altered to survive digestion, which makes them toxic to the liver with prolonged use. Because of this, oral cycles are usually shorter and often paired with liver support supplements. Some steroids are applied through transdermal patches or creams, but these are mostly found in medical hormone replacement, not bodybuilding. Rarely, steroids may be taken subcutaneously or even intranasally, though these methods are less effective. Each method has its pros and cons, but injections remain the gold standard for serious serious users. Anabolic steroids are famous for what they do to your muscles, but their effects go far beyond size. The most obvious result is increased muscle mass. By enhancing protein synthesis and reducing recovery time, steroids allow users to train harder and grow faster. Many also report increased strength, improved endurance, and a more defined physique due to enhanced fat burning potential. Steroids can also alter fat distribution, making muscles look harder and more vascular. Water retention varies depending on the compound. Some cause bloating, while others create a dry, shredded appearance. Users often report faster recovery between workouts, meaning less soreness and more frequent training sessions. Beyond the gym, steroids may impact skin, causing acne or oily texture, especially on the back and shoulders. Hair can grow faster in some areas or fall out in others, especially in men genetically predisposed to baldness. Voice deepening and facial changes can occur with prolonged use, especially in women. The benefit the benefits of anabolic steroids come with a heavy price tag, especially when misused. One of the biggest concerns is cardiovascular damage. Steroids can raise LDL and lower HDL, increasing the risk of heart attack or stroke, even in young users. They can also cause high blood pressure, thickening of the blood, and enlargement of the heart, specifically the left ventricle. The liver takes a beating too, especially with oral steroids. Some compounds are hepatotoxic, leading to liver strain, tumors, or jaundice over time. Acne and oily skin are common, but so are mood swings, irritability, and in some cases, aggression, a phenomenon often called roid rage. In men, steroids can shrink the testicles, reduce sperm count, and even cause infertility. In women, side effects include facial hair, deeper voice, menstrual disruption, and permanent body changes. These effects are often irreversible, even after stopping use. When you take anabolic steroids, your body notices and stops producing its own testosterone. This process is called testosterone suppression. The brain detects the high levels of synthetic hormones and signals the hypothalamus and pituitary pituitary gland to shut down production in the testes. Over time, this leads to testicular atrophy, shrinking of the testicles, and a dramatic drop in natural testosterone levels. Low testosterone brings a host of problems. Fatigue, low libido, depression, and muscle loss are common. In some users, estrogen levels rise as the body tries to balance its hormone levels. This can lead to gynecomastia, the growth of breast tissue in men, which often requires surgery to fix. The longer and heavier the steroid cycle, the more severe the suppression. In some cases, the body doesn't bounce back on its own, and hormone replacement therapy, HRT, becomes a lifelong need. Recovery isn't guaranteed, especially after multiple cycles without proper support. Post-cycle therapy is the protocol steroid users follow after a cycle to help restore natural hormone production. When steroid use stops, the body is often left with low testosterone, high estrogen, and a hormonal crash. PCT is designed to kickstart testosterone production and prevent long-term suppression. Two of the most common PCT drugs are Clomid and Nolvidex. Tamoxifen citrate. These are selective estrogen receptor modulators, SERMs, which block estrogen in the brain. By doing so, they signal the pituitary gland to produce luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, both critical for testosterone production. 
Some users also add aromatase inhibitors AIs like Arimidex to control estrogen levels. Timing and dosage depend on what steroids were used and how long the cycle lasted. Skipping PCT can leave users with permanently low testosterone, poor mood, and loss of muscle gains. It's not optional. It's essential for recovery. Anabolic steroids are controlled substances in many parts of the world, including the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. In the US, for example, example, anabolic steroids are classified as Schedule III drugs under the Controlled Substances Act, meaning it's illegal to possess or distribute them without a valid prescription. Penalties for illegal possession can include fines, criminal charges, and even jail time for repeat offenses. Medically, doctors can prescribe steroids for specific conditions like hormonal deficiencies, muscle-wasting diseases, or delayed puberty, but only in regulated, monitored settings. Outside of this, buying or selling steroids from underground labs, online markets, or gym dealers is illegal and risky. Importation and trafficking laws vary by country. In some places, personal use may not be heavily enforced, but distribution still carries serious legal consequences. Customs agencies and sports regulators also actively screen for steroids, seizing shipments and punishing violators. The legal risks are real, even for personal users. Steroid use can be detected through urine, blood, and sometimes hair follicle tests. Most testing is designed to identify either the parent compound, the steroid itself, or its metabolites, chemical byproducts that remain in the body after the steroid steroid is broken down. These metabolites can linger for days, weeks, or even months, depending on the type of steroid used. For example, oral steroids like Dianabol may clear the system in a few days, while long-acting injectables like Decadurabolin can be detectable for up to 18 months. Modern labs use gas chromatography mass spectrometry and liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry, sensitive methods that can detect even trace amounts. Athletes subject to drug testing, such as in the Olympics, UFC, or college sports face random screenings. Testing positive can lead to suspension, loss of titles, or permanent bans. Even recreational users may face job-related consequences if steroids show up in workplace drug tests, especially in high-risk professions. Anabolic steroids have been widely used in sports to boost performance, despite being banned by nearly every major athletic organization. Athletes use them to increase strength, muscle mass, power output, and recovery speed, giving them a significant edge over competitors. In high-intensity sports like weightlifting, bodybuilding, track and field, and football, steroids have played a major role in breaking records, but also in creating scandals. Testing agencies like the World Anti-Doping Agency maintain strict banned substance lists. Athletes caught using steroids can face multi-year suspensions, disqualification, and permanent damage damage to their reputations. Famous cases include Lance Armstrong, Marion Jones, and countless bodybuilders stripped of titles after failed tests or admissions. Despite the risks, some athletes still cycle steroids during off-seasons or use so-called designer steroids, compounds engineered to be undetectable. However, modern testing has closed many of these loopholes. Today, performance-enhancing drug use is considered both a health risk and a serious violation of sports ethics. One of the biggest myths is that steroids alone build muscle. In reality, steroids don't work without training and diet. They enhance your body's ability to recover and grow, but only if you're lifting consistently and eating for performance. Another myth. All steroid users get huge overnight. Results vary widely depending on genetics, dosage, compound, and discipline. Not everyone becomes a bodybuilder. Some believe steroids make people violent, but the truth is more nuanced. While some users experience increased aggression or mood swings, this isn't universal, and it's often tied to personality, dose, or pre-existing mental health. Another false claim is that steroids are safe if you cycle them correctly. Even with careful use, long-term risks like heart damage, hormonal imbalances, and liver issues remain. Lastly, many assume legal equals safe, but just because something is prescribed doesn't mean it's harmless when misused. Steroids are powerful tools, not magic shortcuts, and misuse carries serious consequences.